This video briefly demonstrates the CM30 package install and configuration procedure for converting your Intraplex T1 or E1 Intraplex multiplexers into NetExpress LX multiplexers. To minimize system downtime, you can install your CM30 modules while your multiplexers are powered up. Be aware that alert and alarm conditions appear on the multiplexer during the update process. If you have an alarm or remote control system wired up to the multiplexer, you might want to disable it before proceeding with the installation. Let's get started. Once you have unpacked everything from the package and inspected it for damage, confirm that you have all the items listed in the Bill of Materials. Two CM30 IP common modules in good condition. Two MA230 IP module adapters in good condition. Eight 440 Phillips screws for securing the MA230 module adapter. If you have questions regarding possible equipment damage or shipping errors, contact our technical support department at one 888 Eight four zero four six two two, or email us at support at gatesair.com. Note, follow your company's safety rules regarding AC-powered equipment installation, especially if there is a conflict between any procedure in this video and your company's rules. Now you may install the CM30 module and MA230 module adapter into any free card slot within the multiplexer. The MA230 must be installed on the back panel of the multiplexer chassis so that it meets and connects with the CM30 at the midplane. Though you can install the modules while the multiplexer is still in live service, please proceed with caution to prevent service interruption and damage to components. While keeping the name label of the MA230 panel oriented toward the top of the chassis, align the edges of the module adapter with the grooves on the top and bottom walls of the chassis. Slide the MA230 from the rear of the shelf until the aluminum plate is flush with the back panel's top and bottom rails. Secure the MA230 securely to the back panel with two of the provided Phillips screws. While keeping its white ejector tab oriented toward the floor of the chassis, align the edges of the CM30 module with the slot rails along the top and bottom of the chassis and slide the module in so that it's now supported by those rails. Fully install the module into its mating connector on the midplane by pressing securely on the white ejector handle. When the CM module initially receives power, its status indicator light is red, which might also trigger the alarm condition on the shelf power supply and any devices that are connected to the alarm output. This condition should not impede any T1-E1 services on the system. After approximately 40 seconds, the ACTV and status indicator lights blink green to show that the CM module is now in learning mode and that your T1-E1 controller module is still operating the multiplexer. At this point, you can connect and log on to the CM30's NetExpress LX web interface. This is the IntraGuide view of the system showing the encoder, the PT353 module operating on T1 bus time slot 1 at 44.1 kilosamples per second. That indicates that it's using 23 time slots. The PR card, PR353 in the associated shelf, is also starting in time slot 1, running at 44.1 kilosamples per second. Connect to the system using the LAN port interface at 192.168.1.1. Use admin for the username and admin for the password. This shows us any available cards that are in local control here at the homepage. The configuration agrees with what we saw in IntraGuide. Time slot 1 at 44.1 kilosamples per second. The first thing to do is change the network interface for the LAN port so that we can stream on the network. Use 10.10.10.1 streaming to 10.10.10.2. Click Submit and OK to verify the change. You'll want to see the WAN interface update to our desired address. 10.10.10.1 Under the Streams tab, we'll create a stream. Transport the PT353 card, and we'll choose the transmit direction. These values are OK. No signaling needed. Click Next. Send it to the destination address of 10.10.10.2. The first available UDP port is fine. Click Next. Choose the TDM Bus 1A, Time Slot 1. A range of 23 time slots is needed. At the default of 200 frames per packet, the packet size is very large and it won't fit. We need something much smaller to be under 1500 bytes, so update TDM Bus frames per packet to be 50. Review the stream parameters that you created. 
Connect under the second system using the same login credentials as the first. On the T1, this is our loop timed system, so we need to set this one to stream timed from the other end in order to match the original configuration. First, change the network interface to match the destination we're streaming toward from the other location. The WAN is now 10.10.10.2. Create a receive stream for the arriving content. Set a receive direction. Make sure it's arriving from 10.10.10.1. And with this 23 time slots at 50 frames per payload, switch program type to linear audio voice and then create that stream. Before putting it in service, You'll choose that stream to be the timing reference. Under System Config, choose System Timing. Choose Stream for Primary Source. Set Primary Receive Stream to the name of the stream just created. And click Submit. Go to Streams and turn on the Receive Stream. The stream's operational state will soon come up. Eventually, the Timing Sources Down error will clear. At the receive location, you can monitor the performance of the arriving stream content. You'll want to make sure that it's running in the center of this 32 packet jitter buffer, so it's currently averaging at 15 or 16. There are no losses. If you switch from manual refresh, this will update so in real time you can clear out the current counters if you wish. That shows the quality of the arriving stream. The primary timing is still down. In a couple of minutes, that will clear. Once the alarm is cleared, check the performance still. It's still at the center of the jitter buffer, so there are no loss packets. You can watch this over time and make sure that the stream runs well over the new network. The system is no longer learning. The stream is up. It says here that the PR card shows active content. Thank you for watching this video. For more information, please visit gatesair.com slash contact or access our customer portal at support.gatesair.com.